Mu. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm going to be teaching you four spooky melodies for low G ukulele. So grab the low G, we've got a lot of fun ahead of us. And I gotta say that these four little short melodies were so much fun for me to write because Halloween has always been one of my favorite holidays. So taking on this little project or this idea to compose four short melodies for uh, a Halloween vibe, so to speak, was just the most fun for me. So I hope you guys dig them. And I've got to say too that my goal was to write four pieces that were suitable for the seasoned beginner budding intermediate player. So I wanted to create something that wasn't super difficult to play and I think I, I nailed just that level. So if that's you, this should be a great challenge and a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how these lessons are going to work because this video is our part one lesson and in this video we're going to be learning the first two pieces. Now if you want to learn the other two pieces that's going to be taught in the part two lesson which you can check out by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for four spooky melodies. <laughs> now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off to follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So this is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and kick into our first melody. And I've titled this tune, Cemetery Gates, which if some of you are diehard metal fans, you know another band has a song named it with the same name. This isn't the same song, so, you know, maybe one day we'll tackle that, but who knows. <laughs> now, I do want to go ahead and state, before we jump into learning this one, you have to know how to do triplet picking. If you're new to this technique, I'm going to put a very short, it's like three and a half minutes long, a little instructional video on YouTube by Taimane and she breaks down the mechanics behind the right hand on how to do this. But if you're familiar with triplet picking, then let's go ahead and learn it. So our first chord, and I'll put the tab up there, it is a stock A minor, like the chord you learn on day one of playing ukulele, right? So go ahead and make the stock A minor. Now you're gonna see a fingering that says to use the ring finger. Keep that thought in mind. We'll talk about using the ring finger in just a second. But for right now, you can start with just the middle finger. So with our triplet picking technique, remember we start on string four and we follow up with two plucks of the A string. Remember you lead with the middle, follow with the index. Okay, so we have the fourth string followed by two plucks of the A string. The next one, we go with the open C string with the thumb, followed by two plucks of the A string. And then the next one, the last one, we have the open E, followed by two plucks of the A string. So the key here is that we're playing eighth note triplets and you can see there's three brackets, right? We have one set of triplet, the second set of triplet, the third set of triplet. So you have one triplet, triplet, two, triplet, three, triplet, okay? If you're new to eighth note triplets, I'm gonna put a link in the description box to a lesson that I did that breaks down the rhythm behind it and explains it. So really important to understand what that rhythm is to make sure that we play it properly. So check that out if you need a quick crash course. But the key thing here is we have four, one, one, three, one, one, two, one, one. And we want to keep it with that steady triplet rhythm. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, right? String four, three, two. So let's see if we can try that one together. So we have one triplet, two triplet, three trip, go. Beautiful. 
Make sure that those bass notes, that four, three, and two, you hit with enough effort from the thumb so that it creates a beautiful sustain over the vamping of that open A string, okay? So that's everything for the first measure. Now, if you look at measure two, what do you notice? It's identical. So let's try this. Let's get rid of that tab. Let's just go two times in a row. So we're gonna play two bars. So we have two times in a row. Let's give it a shot, but slower, right? One triplet, two triplet, three trip, go. Pretty easy so far, right? Going into measure three, we have a minor major seven chord. It sounds very spooky, okay? Easy chord change. All we have to do is take our index, put it on the first fret of string one, first fret of string four, thinking backwards, and that's it. The rest of the strings are open. And if you look at the tab, you guys can see that it's the same right hand picking pattern that we had for the first and the second measure. The only difference is we're fretting the first fret of string four. So let's see if we can try this measure together. Remember, keep the triplet steady. One triplet, two triplet, three trip, go. Beautiful. Now, as we go into our fourth measure, take a look at what happens for the second and the third triplet. You can see that for those second and the third, the first note, we have a different note, okay? So if we look at the first set of triplet, string four, followed by two open A's, that's identical to what we've done before. Now here comes where it gets a little bit tricky. We're gonna keep our index finger planted there. We want this note to sustain and ring out. We're gonna take our pinky, place it on the third fret of string two. And I want you to play that note with a thumb followed by two open A's. And then with your middle finger, we're going to place it onto the first fret of string two, which means we have to lift the pinky finger up. So we're gonna play that with our thumb and then two open A's. Okay, so it's a bit of a finger frenzy because you're still maintaining the first fret up here on string four. Let me play this measure in its entirety and just watch the movement of my left hand fingers. Let me try that again. Okay, so it's a bit of a finger frenzy with what our left hand is doing. So let's start from the top again. First finger, first fret of string four, two open A's, take that pinky, put it on the third fret of string two, Play with that, play with that, play that note with your thumb. Two open A's, lift the pinky up, get rid of it, we don't need it. Put the middle finger down, keep the index where it is. Middle is on the first fret of string, two. Play that note followed by two open A's. Let's see if we can put that one together nice and slow. So we have one triplet, two triplet, three trip, go. Okay, so that one, you may need to hit pause and practice. That one's a little bit tricky. Now, remember in the beginning, I talked about that A minor. Let's put that chord shape back up there. It says to use the ring finger. This is why. If you look at where we left off, we left off with first and middle finger down. First fret of string four, first fret of string two. That means our middle finger is occupied, right? So if we transition back to A minor, we can get a cleaner transition if we use our ring finger to grab the top note. Okay, now sometimes you may have noticed that when you move from one chord or one note to another, you get a little bit of this unwanted string noise. Let me demonstrate. So that was a little bit exaggerated, but you hear a little bit of open strings and some stuff that you don't want to, to hear. Plus, look at the movement as I transition. 
so we heard a little bit of string noise there too but that transition is like so hard to go from this funky shape to the stock A minor. So that's the big reason that you're seeing a three up there. We want to make this transition as easy as possible. And the easiest way to transition is to use a finger that's free, that's not being used at the time before. So we're gonna use our ring finger to transition. So watch that fourth measure going back into the first measure. Check it out. Beautiful, seamless. The neck didn't drop down. You didn't hear that unwanted string noise. It was just nice and easy, okay? So make sure that when you get to the repeat, after measure four, you're literally just gonna go back and play measures one through four again. When you get to that spot, use the ring finger to grab A minor. It's gonna make your life so much easier. But uh, before we get there, let's go ahead and take a step backwards. Let's try measure three to measure four, and then let's try one through four, okay? So measure three to four sounds like this. Let's you and I try that one together. Here we go. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. Nice, and one through four. One triplet, two triplet, three trip, go. Beautiful. Now remember that transition. At this point, you're going to go back, you're gonna play all four bars again. To transition, use the ring finger. There's measure one, measure two, back to first finger for three, measure four. Beautiful. And then at this point, so we're literally eight bars into the tune, right? we're going to end this first melody with a ritardando. So when we transition into this fifth measure on the tablature, technically it's our ninth bar of the tune, we're going back with the ring finger for A minor. And we're doing a ritardando, followed by a strum and a little bit of a harmonic to give a little zest, okay? So take a look at the fifth measure right here, and literally it's the same as measure one. Right, we're using the ring finger though, and we're going to start to gradually slow down. And as you go into measure six to end it, just give me a strum of the A minor. Now if you want to add a little bit of that zest or that spice, you can add a harmonic which is called an artificial harmonic, to the 12th fret of the open A string. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm strumming with my thumb, four, three, two, and when I get to string one, I'm going to do an artificial harmonic with the pluck method. Oops, if we can get it. There we go. Sounds really cool, when you know it. That was like my fifth take, <laughs> full disclosure. So. How do we do that? Well, there's a few th preliminary things you have to learn first, but to learn that, you can do so in our harmonics course. It actually teaches you three ways to do, or to create harmonics, and it's 100% free. So you can jump into that course. I'll put a link in the description box below too. And you can learn how to do that type of harmonic, which is called artificial harmonic using the plucked method. There's natural harmonics, and there's even harmonics where you can tap like with your right hand, and it looks really, really cool. It sounds really, really cool. If you wanna see it and hear it, jump into the course. Remember, you can learn the mechanics behind doing the harmonics for free. Okay, so we are done with Cemetery Gates. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play through everything. Remember, the first four bars repeats, so that gives you the first eight bars, and then we go into the little ending. 
with the strummed A minor at the end. So here's what everything sounds like as a whole. And if you want to make it easier at the end, you can just strum that A minor, just regular A minor, like I did right there. So that's everything for our first tune. Let's jump into our second one, which is called The Haunted Mansion. So let me go ahead and play the first couple bars, because that gives us a good chunk of what the first phrase sounds like. And here it is. So very catchy. So the first thing you want to do with this one is just sing it. Bum, ba, da, 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 ba, da, ba, da. If you can sing it, you can play it. Okay, so let's jump into it. But let's start with just the first measure. And on the tablet here, we'll put it up there. This is measure number seven. Um, if you want to, you can think of it as the first measure for this tune. Um, either one works, but we'll call it measure seven because that coincides with our tab. So this one, we're going to be starting with an open C. Okay, and it's going to be a quarter note. At this point, we're going to take our index finger, place it on the third fret of string two, play that note, use your middle finger to play the fourth fret of string two, and then go back to the third fret. So you can see that my index finger stays anchored that entire time. So I have open C, then third fret of string two, fourth fret, back to third. Okay? This entire time, I want that C note to ring out so we can have that beautiful sustain. And you can make it pop a little bit. You can hit it a little bit harder for that first beat. Sounds really cool. Now at this point, all you're going to do is drop the index finger down to the first string. So keep it on that third fret, but down to string one. And give me that note. So all together we have, right, remember, if you can sing it, bum ba da da da, you can play it, okay? So let's see, let's see if we can go about bum ba da da da, ready, go. Ready, again. Ready, go. Nice. So not too, too hard, right? Now, as we go into our next measure, if you look at the notation above the tab, it's all quarter notes, so it's very, very simple. So think about where we left off. We left off on that first string, third fret. Drop down a half step to the second fret. Play that note. Then with your middle finger, put it on the third fret of string two. Give me that note. Open G, back to third fret of string two. So what do you see this time around? These fingers are staying anchored the entire time. Okay, so it creates a beautiful sustain. Now you can see that the chord above it is an E minor. So literally we're just playing out of that E minor shape. So you can think of it like that, although we don't even need the ring finger. So all together we have, okay? Let's see if you and I can try that. Remember, keep it all steady quarter. So we have one, two, three, four, here we go now. Ready, go. Beautiful. Now let's talk for a second about right hand approach. Triplet picking in the previous melody had a very defined right hand approach for picking. This time around, this tune, it's kind of open to what works best for you. You could stick with a four finger approach where each finger gets its own string, so thumb, index, middle, ring, four, three, two, one. Or you could do a three finger approach, which I think I favor for this. So that's gonna be thumb playing string four and three, index plays string two, 
middle place string one. Or you could do a hybrid. You can mix and match between four finger and three finger picking approach. Now, if you're new to either of those, then jump into our finger picking concepts course, which I'll link in the description box below. It teaches you the four finger approach, the three finger approach, and even using only your thumb. Lots of exercises and some really fun and cute sounding etudes in that course. But at this point, let's backtrack and let's try the seventh into the eighth measure. So that'll give us a good musical phrase. Let's give that a shot. And maybe we'll try bum ba da da ba ba da ready go. Nice. Let's try again. Bum ba da da ba if my stomach doesn't stop growling. <laughs> bum ba da 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 ready go. Beautiful. So if that's a little bit too fast for you, you can use the YouTube uh, tools to slow it down. Or if you're a premium member, even better, you can use that on-screen tab here and you can literally just slow it down to any speed. It can be anything from like 30 to 100. So if you need 57% speed, you can do just that. Okay, let's go into our next couple measures. This is going to be ending one and we'll talk about that in a second. But here's what the next two bars sound like. So very simple stuff. Let me play again. Okay, so the first chord we're playing out of, stock A minor shape again. This time around, we can just use the middle finger. And we're literally going to be playing quarter notes out of it. So play string four, string one, string three, string one. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. One, two, three, four. Okay, but a little bit faster. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. Nice. So very simple. Now here's where it becomes a little bit tricky. We've got this diminished chord shape. So to make this, what we're going to do Watch how I transition. You can see that I add one finger at a time. Because if you look at the tab, you can see that we play the fourth fret of string four first, then the second fret of string three, then the first fret of string one, sorry, string two. <laughs> so there's no need for us to go all three fingers down in this tough chord there's no need for us to fret everything at the get-go. We don't have to go, <laughs> right? That's a really tough chord to grab that quick. So we just add a finger at the time that it's called for in the music. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the trick there. Add only what you need at the time that you need it. So to make this chord, take that pinky, put it on the fourth fret of string four. Middle finger is the second fret of string three. Index is the first fret of string two. That gives us this cool diminished, it could also be thought of as a G7, because this note is the same as just a lower octave, okay? So I would hit pause, Work on this chord shape, get it memorized. It's a little tough, a little tricky, but if you've got it down, then let's see if we can try the ninth into the tenth measure. Okay, so here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Good, and let this chord ring out. Now, this is a stretch chord, okay? And a stretch chord literally just means anything that requires reach of our left hand. Now, there could be stretch chords like we just played. There could also be stretch licks. It's just single note stuff where you've got to 
place some stuff that's kind of spread far, right? So if you're new to tackling stretch licks or stretch chords, and you want to work on increasing the reach of your left hand, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to a lesson that I did that has three exercises that do just that. They help you increase the reach of your left hand. So good stuff, and I will say if you jump into it, don't push it. Building this, uh, or increasing the reach of your left hand takes time. You know, you, you, it takes a, at least a few months of working at it to start to really see a difference, okay? So start slow and, you know, keep that in mind. It takes a little bit of time. Okay, so let's backtrack. Let's try those four bars, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's try that one together. So here we go. And let's try bum ba da dum bum ba da That's a good speed. bum ba da dum ba Ready, go. Beautiful. And that time around, if you were watching my left hand, I used a little bit of different fingering for the ninth and tenth measure. And that brings up a good point. The fingers that I, fingerings that I'm suggesting, they're going to be the best choices for the big seasoned beginner intermediate player, but don't feel like everything is set in stone. If something feels a little bit more comfortable, like that last chord, feels better to use the ring finger up top, go for it. So just keep that in mind. So here comes the really cool part. At this point, you're going to go back and you're gonna play seven and eight again. But instead of going into nine and 10, you're going to jump into ending number two, which is 11 and 12. And it sounds like this. So really cool chromatic runs that are happening. Now let's go ahead and learn that, but let me do this. Let me play through those few bars just to make sure that we know where it's coming. So that gives us a context of how it fits into the music. So starting on 11, we've got all eighth notes. And we're gonna be using what I, well, not what I call, but it's known as piccato picking. And piccato picking is a really cool picking technique that uses, it's essentially the same as the triplet picking, where you're just alternating between middle and index. So. Take the A string, and I want you to go middle, index. That's it. And just keep going, middle, index, middle, index. Now if you think about it, doing two fingers to vamp on this one string is a lot more efficient than if you were to go one finger. You'd have to work twice as hard, right? But two fingers, voila. So it makes it much easier to play notes quickly, like quick burst of notes across one string. And it's just a really great technique uh, to keep in your little tool shed of techniques. Now, if you are new to piccato picking, then check out our lesson called La Hitanita. I'll put a link in the description box below. It's a flamenco tune. It's good for the intermediate player, really cool sounding tune, but it teaches you uh, piccato picking plus a really cool accented strum called rasgado. So check out that if you want a little bit more in-depth detail into this technique. So for this measure, we're gonna start out with the fourth fret of string number one with our ring finger. So go ahead and place your finger there. Give me that note. Then take the middle finger, put it on the third fret, same string, so the A string. And then lift that up, put your index finger down on the second fret, the A string. So you're literally walking chromatically down, which means you're going a half step at a time. So four to three to two. Okay, so four, three, two. Remember our piccato picking, middle, index, middle. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. Four, three, two, 
Here we go. Ready, go. Four, three, two. Beautiful. Looking at the tab, look at what happens next. The exact same thing on the second string. So you're gonna go four, three, two. So let's try this. We're gonna go four, three, two, and again on top. So, all right, so I want you to keep it nice and steady and even. So we have three and four and one and two and three and. Okay, let's slow it down. Three and four and one and two and three and. Now what's gonna be tough it's probably the right hand because check it out. Piccato stays true throughout. Middle, index, middle, index, middle, index. Remember, keep alternating even if you're going up a string, right? So keep that alternate pattern happening. So to finish it up though, we're literally going to start going the opposite way. So we've gone down chromatically. Now we're going to go up chromatically, okay? So we left off on the second fret. We're going to reverse it and go three, four, okay? So if you think about it as a whole, four, three, two on the A string, four, three, two on the E string, then start to reverse, three, four. But keep it steady, one and two and three and four and. Let's try that, three and four and. Beautiful. Going into the 12th measure, take a look at the rhythm. It goes quarter, quarter, half note. Okay? So you're still going chromatically for the first part. Two, three, and technically you still are going for the last one because you're going to the fourth fret, but we're going to jazz it up and add a little chord. Just a minor shape. So for this one, we're going to take the middle finger, put it on the fourth fret of string three, ring fingers underneath, fourth fret of string two, and pinkies under that, first fret. Sorry, fourth fret of string one. It's late and I'm getting my things uh, jumbled up, but I think you guys are following. Four, four, four from the third string down. So again, for this last measure, we have two, three, four all on four. And just give me a down strum for the last one. But let's remember we have one, two, three, four. So let's try. Three, four, one, two, strum. Cool. And again, backtrack 11 to 12. That'll put it into the context. Let's give that a shot. Three and four. So a really cool way to, uh, to end it and give it that kind of Halloween vibe. So that's gonna be everything for our second tune, The Haunted Mansion. I'm gonna play through everything so we can just hear what we've covered. And it sounds like this. Okay, so that's a good gist of everything for that second melody. And that's gonna wrap up everything for this part one lesson. So in our part two lesson, we're gonna be jumping into the next two tunes, which is called Witch's Brew, which is super cool. So if you want to learn that melody, plus the fourth one, which is the escape, which is the really cool fast one, that's gonna all be taught in our part two lesson, which you can check out by clicking this link or going to the site, rockclass101.com, and doing a search for four 
spooky melodies. Now, don't forget to, on that page to the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records. You can also check out the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Literally, you can hit play on the tab. You can uh, highlight bars to loop sections. You can slow it down to any speed. Just a really, really cool asset in helping learn these songs that much easier. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I will see you in the part two one. Take care.